Marketers are often challenged to gather customer data and stay on top of prospects. Marketing is not linear anymore. It's always flowing, a back-and-forth highway. Programmatically, it's a dynamic process where marketers and agencies are monitoring customer behavior, deciding which leads need further engagement on an upper funnel level or which ones are re-engaged with more complex business information. With this in mind, Madison Logic is a company that can illustrate this reality in our brief series. Let's start with an example of taking a marketing asset, uh, first party data, and following a customer through the buyer's journey all the way to the point of sale. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, what we really are focused on at Madison Logic and, and as an ABM firm in general is really beginning with a data-driven approach and having an understanding of the behaviors of the audience that we're chasing, right? Um, I think for a lot of years in the marketing space, we were, let's say, using some broad spectrum tactics. We knew uh, an organization might have a good fit profile. They seemed like the right target. Um, but really, we weren't backing that with any kind of data or insight. So a core tenement for us in Madison Logic is really beginning with a data-driven approach understanding the behaviors of our audience and what their research looks like inside of these organizations to make sure that we're, we're targeting the right companies and spending that budget effectively on, on organizations that are most likely to be in market in the near future. Once we've had that initial engagement, we, we need to continue to pursue them, like you mm -hmm. said, follow them through the funnel. How open has it been to the uh, customers, or let's say the advertiser's CRM um, mm -hmm. process? I mean, could you put a percentage on it? Could you do a pie chart to say, well, you know, this past year, maybe uh, a certain percentage has allowed us, you know, through that, you know, mm -hmm. the transparency of the, the customer's uh, CRM? Yeah. Uh, it's a fair question. It's a, it's a yeah. fair question, 100%. You know, and, I, and we, we certainly understand that there's hesitancy with it. There's a lot of very potent data in those systems, right? Um, but the reality is that I think we're seeing upwards of a 50% adoption rate with CRM. With marketing automation, it's even higher. And, and I think that the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. Um, when you're able to serve this content dynamically on an automated basis, you take that manual component out of it of pulling these lists, mm -hmm. checking every day, and you plan your attack based on what the stages of engagement are, and you optimize, right? you improve it over time. Right? How do you help marketers go deeper into the industries they target? You know, whether it's energy, healthcare, uh, construction. Sure. Or... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I think what I think it's. To, to be a little bit of a broken record here, it really is about the data. It's about having an understanding of, you know, even within an, a vertical like energy, within healthcare, there are so many sub-segments of those industries. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a thousand different healthcare companies and they solve a thousand different problems. So uh, I think it's really about understanding that if you want to take an approach to your best buyers, to the right organizations, there's more to it than just, you know, we want a thousand plus employees or we want it to be X amount of revenue. I think it's really about saying, what do our buyers look like? Who is buying from us and, and who is finding value in our product? And using that information to build an audience that looks like the people who are buying from you now. Um, so if you're in the healthcare vertical and you think you want to sell to insurance providers or benefits providers, I think you have to do some analysis of, are those the people that are buying from me now? And if they are, great. Let's, let's look into that. Let's find ways to penetrate into that. So to be successful from the start, you know what, and and you've covered this, but this is things that I, I'm I'm always interested in knowing is the technology information that's really needed on the marketer's end. Right. You know what should they have ready and prepared when partnering with Madison Logic? When sure. they make that first call or they send that first proposal. Right. What should they have you know ready to go? Well, an open mind and a great attitude is a great <laughs> place to start. Um, so technologically, I think that the. Look, every tech stack is going to be different, right? I think that's something that we've come across. But I think that there are some pretty core basic tools that you can be using that, that will drive a, a, you know, a revenue-building marketing structure. And I think it begins with um, a marketing automation tool. I really, I really, really press the, the need for something like that because it's a really great way to have a consistently building engagement structure with your audience. So many marketers have a hard time uh, combining their first-party data with their second and uh, third-party data. So what solutions do you have for that? That's a good question. It's a great <laughs> question. I think, you know, and I think that that's, uh, that, that was the nature, that is where these integrations that we've built have come from. We have so many organizations that have said to us, you know, we, you guys are doing some, some really phenomenal work for us to engage our audience, to give our content to these, to these individuals, to, to prove value of our brand. 
you know, but once they arrive in our system, we have built so much data on what they, how they re-engage, if they click through on the email, do they come to the website? It would be so powerful to take the data that you use to find them and engage them, and the data that we have on what they do when they arrive, and use it in a single, in a single approach. Well, Chris, it's been a great privilege to have you as, as part of our series. I apologize for the background noise, but actually, it's a, it's a good thing to hear because we're you know we're busy at work in the early <laughs> mornings, and we, we thought we'd do this live on site and to just not only talk about the action uh, of things that that's happening out there, but also hearing the action, that's right. hearing things. And you said, yeah, you know, we have a whole NASA center here as, as well as you do. So that's right. uh, it's uh, been great. Thank right. you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah.